Hi, I'm Liz. I'm Bill. And this is the second episode of Liz and Bill's Cosmic Adventures. That's right. We thought this time we'd take you into one of the topics that everybody seems to love in astronomy, the planets orbiting other stars, also known as extrasolar planets. And also known as exoplanets for short. That's right. It's one of the topics that we always get questions about. We're always kind of writing new stories about. There's always news about this. And it's just such an important thing. We thought, well, let's, let's break it down a little bit. So astronomers have been finding these planets for pretty much just exactly just 20 years. Mm -hmm. The first ones they found were actually very odd objects. Um, a few planets around a pulsar. And that's pretty much a stellar remnant. Yeah, like almost the last place you'd expect to yeah. find a planet. Yeah. The other type of planets mm -hmm. that have been pretty popular, they're not quite as bizarre of a place. They're around more normal stars. But those are called hot Jupiters. Mm -hmm. they're, they're planets that are really big, like our, our familiar planet Jupiter, or bigger. And they're called hot because they orbit in really close to their stars. Uh, they've also found another class called Super Neptunes, smaller than hot Jupiters, and even a class called Super Earths, which are not quite like Earth, but they're rocky, they're terrestrial, and they can be one, three, five times bigger than our home planet. Our measurements are so exact, we can find and determine the weather on some of these other planets. What the, what the wind system is like, and where it's hottest, and where it's not so hot. So it's really neat that these worlds, millions and millions of miles and kilometers away, we can still tell what the weather is going to be like on them. So what methods do they use to find these planets? Um, there are a few big methods. One is looking at a dip in light, mm -hmm. so as a planet crosses the face of a star, you can see the light slightly decrease. Um, and it's, astronomers can also determine whether it's a planet versus, say, a star spot mm -hmm. on the actual star. Right, or a smudge on the telescope lens, or whatever <laughs> it might be. Another possibility is radial velocity. No, not radio velocity. Radial velocity. So this is, planets will have some sort of gravitational tug on their stars. And so astronomers will see sort of a slight shift away, or red, in the incoming light and slightly blue if the star is moving toward. And that shift is a result of as the planet is actually orbiting mm -hmm. the star. It's similar to the Doppler shift you hear when a train approaches and goes away or a police siren. Also, astronomers have been able to directly image some of these exoplanets just with their light itself. Uh, it can't be every planet, and it's actually almost no planets, but a few of them meet the criteria if they're sufficiently hot. Astrometry is another way that astronomers have to determine uh, if there's an exoplanet around a star, and that's just uh, observing a star, see if it has any kind of slight movement, again, related to the planet's tug on it. It'll be small, slight, so it's almost entirely down to the computers. Even science has its duller moments. How many planets have they found? 518. But <laughs> as that, of now, the number right can now. very likely go up very soon. Uh, there's NASA's Kepler mission, which is currently orbiting and has been hauling in these things. They I have thought you were going to say something else. After that. <laughs> it's been doing a lot of work. <laughs> So one thing that Kepler's really looking for mm. is a planet similar to Earth, um, about the same size and orbiting about where Earth orbits. So right. that's called the habitable zone. And this is a place where liquid water can survive on the surface. And it won't be steam, it won't be ice. Mm, not too hot, not too cold. So it's Just also called right. the, the Goldilocks, Goldilocks zone. There was a group in September 2010 which announced the discovery of a planet about one and a half times the size of Earth, right smack dab in the center of the star's habitable zone. Right, which is something that we'd never really found before. I mean, the finding hasn't been confirmed yet by other scientists, but if it is in the next few years, it's pretty big news. That what they do is they name the planets after the star that it orbits. Mm -hmm. So this star is Gliese. Gliese? Isn't it Gliese? Gliese? Oh. Gliese. Galiza. Thanks, Rich. So the planet is Galiza 581G. G. As in Geronimo. Hmm. 
yeah, hope you enjoyed our second episode, and mm -hmm. we'll be back with more in-depth science. That's right, and and a few jokes. And a few jokes, Hopefully. some humor. A little bit. Mm -hmm. So until then, see you next time. Bye. The same people that brought you the Galaxy Zoo website, the Zooniverse, have also come up with a new, a new plug. Uh, I almost did it. I almost pulled it out, but I couldn't. Yeah. Gleeza. Thanks, Thanks, Rich. Okay, that didn't really work. Let's try that again. <laughs> I forget what else we were saying after yeah, that. Yeah, I don't remember either.